I have had plenty of time to think about my favourite books of 2016, so I thought that today I would do a video telling you about one of them. I have also done a blog post on this topic, which I will link in the description below, and you should check it out, especially as I have just relaunched my blog. So head on over there and take a look. So this list only includes books that were published before 2017. So although I thought that Gilded Cage by Vic James was very good, it couldn't be on this list because it wasn't actually published in 2016. I read a proof copy. Um, so yeah, that kind of gets an honorary mention, but it didn't come out in 2016. So it is not on the official list. I'm going to start with the best book I read all year, and that is Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho. I loved it so much, it's set in Regency England, there's magic, conspiracy, politics, and a really kick-ass lady. So yeah, um, what more can I say? Um, there's also dragons. I love this book so much, I will probably even reread it before the second one. That's how much. And I tend not to reread first books, but I will in this case. I will. The second best book I read all year was Love Song by Cynthia Bennett. This book, this book. I went into this book thinking it would be quite a fun, light read. You know, it's about a girl who ends up going on tour with a boy band. I just kind of thought it would be kind of fun. I didn't expect it to take over my heart and my soul and my everything. <laughs> that sounds like a really corny boy band lyric, what can I say? Oh my god, it was just so emotionally fantastic. I was just completely drawn into it. I loved it so, so, so much. I just... I can't really say anything more about it because it was spoil it. But yeah, if you like contemporaries, you need to read Love Song. Even if you don't like boy bands, because I don't really like boy bands, read Love Song. Seriously. So now we're on to the best of the rest. Um, honourable mentions, etc, etc. These are in no particular order. When I first started reading When We Collided, I thought, uh, this is going to be super twee. It's about a girl who comes to a small town and changes a boy's life. Um, but actually, it's got a really good twist on that and it's really really emotionally involving and it's sad and beautiful and there's twists in it and things that we don't know and don't expect to have to think about and it's just it's just fantastic another great wonderful contemporary that i strongly recommend i haven't got a copy of this to show you because i've read it from the library but marisi had a really really interesting premise one that i loved and would have been exactly the kind of thing i would have been well into when i was a teenager it's set on an island convent for women only and they're kind of a almost self-sufficient community who do some trading with the outside world marie sees the main character she loves her life in the red abbey but one day this new girl comes to the island who is on the run from the men in her family who are trying to hunt her down because she ran away and the island is threatened and it's about how they deal with that and it's a really great premise I think it would make a fantastic film my only caveat is that the language is a bit plain I don't know if something was lost in translation or what but it wasn't as beautifully written as most of the other books on this list um, for that reason I have to mark it down a little bit the next book on the list is The Girl of All the Gifts by M.R. Carey, which I thought was absolutely gripping and fantastic. I read it around seeing the film, um, I'll, I'll go into that in a bit more detail in my uh, wrap up, but I just, wow, I just thought it was absolutely brilliant and I can see why it has got all the hype that it has got, it's very well deserved. The next book is This Song Will Save Your Life by Leila Sales, which I went into expecting to love it because it's a girl's and music and it's absolutely normally my kind of thing. I knew she was going to be a DJ, which I'm not so into, um, but I didn't expect it to be like the way it was somehow. It wasn't what I expected, it was different, but I really enjoyed the way it was. I can't really, I can't really describe how I expected it to be, really. I just know that it surprised me and I really liked it and I definitely want to find a secret club that I can go to. Yeah. 
I ended up kind of having a bit of a music march and another book I read during this time was My Secret Rockstar Boyfriend by Eleanor Wood which I thought was so much fun and actually really thoughtful. I wasn't expecting it to be as thoughtful as it was. It has a lot to say about class and um, the perils of messing up your life and how to deal with that and friendship and boyfriends that you're kind of with just because they're there. I thoroughly recommend it to anybody who enjoys contemporary, especially those looking for contemporary with a British twist. Then I read Only Ever Yours by Louise O'Neill. I went into it knowing it was going to be pretty horrific and devastating and it was horrific and devastating. Even though I knew it was going to happen in the end, I still found it really hard hitting. The best way I could describe it is like a zoomed in version of The Handmaid's Tale, whereas The Handmaid's Tale um, follows a lot of the political stuff that's going on in the world and the main character's impressions of it. Um, in Only Ever Yours, it's so extreme and so narrow and so focused on the lives of these girls being brought up in this system that it's very claustrophobic and you don't really know the political situation so you're left to speculate on it and I thought that was interesting you know a lot of people have said that they're kind of doing the same thing and that it's kind of like a YA version of The Handmaid's Tale but I think they're coming at the same issue and similar ideas at different angles The Handmaid's Tale takes more of a macro view and um, Only Ever Yours takes a micro view. So I think they are good books to read alongside each other, or that at least you should read both of them at some point. I picked up Revel of the Sands not really knowing anything about it. I don't think I even read the blurb, to be honest. I mean, I hardly ever read the blurb, but you know, if it's a book I don't really know very much about, I will pick it up and have a look at that cover. And I didn't in this case, I just kind of opened it and started reading. And I really, really enjoyed it. It's a sort of desert western type story um, with some magic emerging later on. And it's it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of rebellion and planning and strategy and sticking up for your friends in it, which may, I think will make it appeal to a lot of dystopia fans. It's not a dystopia, it's kind of like a alternate world historical fantasy book. But um, if you like YA dystopias, then I think you will also enjoy this as it has a lot of the same aspects to it. Finally, the last book on this list is The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. Uh, this is the first Patrick Ness book I've read and I definitely want to read more after having finished this. It is about the people left in the background whilst the chosen ones are saving the world. The other kids, um, as opposed to the indie kids, which is what the characters in this book call um, the chosen ones, the ones who are usually the protagonists of the book. I really loved it because it had so much heart. Not only because it explored the lives of these characters who are normally in the background and all the terrible stuff that can happen to you even if you're just an ordinary human, but also because it had time for the chosen ones and all the trauma and loss that they go through. So these are my favourite books that I've read in 2016. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more from me, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up while you're at it. Bye!